Hi traders, welcome back to another episode of Drink Forex. Uh, it's been a while, it's been well over a year. Um, you know, I'd done the post on, on Skype a little while back and, and also Twitter and fortunately enough, uh, people responded back that I think we're gonna start doing these interviews more often. Um, today on the show, we have Brian McAvoy, uh, who's the founder of Inside Out Trading. Uh, Brian has a pretty unique history and how he got involved in trading. Um, he is an engineer and then he specifically focuses on helping people understand what it means to be a trader and more of the psychological aspect of things versus um, a specific trading style. Um, so Brian, thanks for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, this, I've, I've been looking forward to this. Our, our previous conversations were enjoyable. So yeah, as far as doing this today and uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Yep, you're welcome. Do you want to um, give a little bit more of a detailed background, sort of how you got your start in the trading industry? Yeah, well, as you can see by the gray hairs, I'm uh, not not a kid in this. Uh, actually, my 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 start uh, goes clear back to the days of Ken Roberts and the uh, you know ordering his book through the mail and getting caught up in the futures uh, futures trading. For those that even remember Ken Roberts, uh, it's, it's it's like we're going back to the '90s. Um, so yeah, it goes back a ways. But yeah, got, got my got my uh, got my feet wet with Ken Roberts, and uh, as far as getting into uh, working with other traders, uh, personally, I, I I found it really interesting because I'll tell my kids and, and a lot of people I know, especially like you know college kids who are stressing about their future and stuff. It's like don't sweat it because you, you can only see so far down the road anyway. And you know, before I got started in this, if you would have told me that this is what I would have wound up doing, I would have said yeah, right. So you never know what's going to be on your path. Um, how I got into helping traders was having had the uh, having had the experience, and like most traders, I underestimated it. Thought, yeah, yeah, easy enough. Jumped in and had to had to get slapped around a bit before I woke up to the realities of it. But uh, I was actually in the process of starting a mortgage company and ran an ad for loan originators and had this one gal come with a plan. I'm interviewing her, and she had just gotten her certification as a life coach. I'm like, wow, I didn't know they even had certifications for that kind of stuff, let alone whole schools and everything. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, she had a, her specialization was in emotional intelligence. And I've been through that training in the corporate job that I had. And I was like, so that's what we want to talk about. We didn't even talk about the mortgage business. And so I asked her, uh, you know, so at the school, how do they teach you to, you know, get new clients and stuff? And she goes, well, like what you experienced, you know, the corporate uh, training and stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God, that, that sucks. I've been on both sides of that purchase process. And it's especially for vendors. I mean, corporations tend to enjoy abusing vendors. So I feel for you. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, really, you're totally missing the boat. Forget the corporate side. You need to be over here talking to traders. you got this whole population of people that are having a hard time keeping a handle on their emotions and they're taking a huge beating and there's no good help over here for it. So she and I talked and she had a partner who lived down in Puerto Rico. And so the three of us were going to start a company where we actually took one of their coaching programs for emotional intelligence. We we're going to customize it for traders. And I was going to help them customize it since I knew the traders experience and I've been through the emotional intelligence training. And then I was, I was also going to do the marketing and they would do the coaching. Well, we get the whole thing set up, got the name, got the, the corporate papers filed, got the bank account set up, and we're coming up day one, ready to go, and they, they got cold feet. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Fine, I'll do it myself. I mean, I, I'm, I'm the one who's got all the inside information anyway, as far as the, you know, the trading and all this. So, so I wound up, yeah, that's what I decided to do. And I just did, decided to drop the mortgage business. That wasn't really panning out anyway. And it's been excellent because as far as helping traders, it's funny because most people find me looking for help with trading psychology. But what I've found is I help everybody the best, not by teaching them psychology stuff so much as good business and quality practices. Before I, was, before I did all this, I was a, a quality assurance manager in a manufacturing operation, making plastic bottles like, like these. And I loved quality. But if you think about it, it's, it's perfect for traders because, I mean, what's the biggest challenge traders have? Being consistent in what you're doing and getting consistent, reliable results. That's like the big challenge. And that's exactly what quality is all about. It's that whole industry is founded on consistency and reliability in your process. And it's, it's been fun. And uh, so anyway, that's, that's how I got started doing what, you know, uh, what I'm doing in the trading industry. Uh, and that's my general focus. Hey, I, don't, I don't focus on specific methods. 
um, or, or you know try to teach specific, specific strategies. There's, there's plenty of people doing that, and they're better at that than I am. This this is my my area of expertise. So, um, yeah. So that's that's where, uh, how I got to where I'm at today. And then as far as reaching out to you, I just uh, yeah, I, I knew when, when we first connected. It's like yeah, yeah. I want to I want to I want to have further conversation with you. This, this, <laughs> this is good. Nice. What um, so what would you say is like the biggest psychological mistake most traders make? in their in their trading oh huge it, it's funny because it, I, I mean i didn't realize this when i first started working with traders um but um the biggest problem most traders have is not a lack of discipline or a lack of intelligence or a lack of sincerity or willingness to put forth effort the, the biggest problem most traders have is they don't know what they're doing they, they've got they've jumped into a job without the proper preparation and any time, and this goes back to uh, one of my favorite stories. I mean, and it's not even my book. Way back when, uh, there, there was this book was real popular back in the seventies and eighties called the Peter Principle. And the the Peter Principle, I mean, the guy was commissioned to go study why there were so many mistakes and bad decisions made across American business in in general, because they were looking at American business and it's like it's amazing that we're able to make money because there's so many bad decisions made. And so he was commissioned to do this. And what he found um, <clears throat> was that American businesses, it was their way of promoting people. And what the, the, the standard practice was, you hire some guy and, you know, or, or, or gal, and they come on and they're doing a good job. And so you promote them and, and they're doing a good job in the, their new job and, and you keep promoting them. But eventually they hit a point where they're not doing so great now. They've kind of hit their limit. And so that's where he coined the, 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 the Peter Principle, the, the quote, and it, it says, in any uh, hierarchical organization or organizational hierarchy, however you want to state it, a person will rise to their level of incompetence and then remain there. And this like was really famous back in the 80s. And the big lesson in all that was, um, and it became the Peter Prescription, his second book, but it just says, before you promote somebody, don't just promote, don't just promote them because they're doing well. What you need to do is look at the job that they're moving into and then assess their skill set versus the job requirements, not necessarily just because they're doing well. And if you'll if you'll give them a proper assessment with a new job and the, the skills needed to do that job well, and if there's anything they're lacking, you train them for it. Well, just because they bring those other personal assets that made them excel in the previous jobs, now with the proper training, they'll continue to excel. So how would you assess somebody's skill set for trading? Like what would be some qualities that you see from successful traders? Well, um, back, back to your original question, one of the biggest psychological mistakes is trading with real money before you're, before you're sol truly solid with your system and your method. Most people get they get busy trading with real money and they, they, they hope to get trading and then establish success. And what I found, they're doing it backwards. What you need to do is work in your demo account, establish real success there, not just playing around where you start making some money, but you, you get good at what you're doing and you know that what you have works. Proven by your own hands. Not just because the guy who sold you the system made money with it, but you prove it with your own hands and you establish the competence with it so that you know you can trade it well and you know that it works because you've done it with your own hands in the real markets. Once you've established that, then you can go trade with real money and then your odds are, are actually in your favor. Most people don't do that. They just jump in and, and think they can figure it out as they go. And that establishes all kinds of horrible psychological things, so bad habits, bad expectations, low self-esteem. I mean, that's a huge long list of bad things to get established that later have to get fixed. And so it's, it's absolutely, from a psychological standpoint, it's absolutely worth the time to take, you know, one to three to six months, find a system that works for you and, and, and then establish your competence. So the, the, the metaphor that I like to use is if you had never played golf before, but decided you want to be a competition golfer, you wouldn't just go sign up for tournaments. You know, you don't just buy a set of clubs and go get busy. No, you you would you know you hire a pro who you know to teach you about the game and and how to do it. You'd spend a lot of time at the driving range so that you you know you can tee off and, and keep it in the fairway. You'd spend a lot of time on the par threes, getting your short game, getting on the greens, and you spend a lot of time on the putting green so that you build your skills so that when it came tournament time, you know what you're doing and you have the skills and the competence 
and they understand it to deal with the changing environment and you're okay from a psychological standpoint. So it's funny because one, one of my favorite questions used to be to ask people was, you know, how do you know when you've made it as a trader? And for a while, the, the, my answer was, well, you've made it when you reach that level of confidence, competence and confidence that you're no longer concerned when you go to the markets. You, you don't feel any anxiety. You don't feel any stress. You don't feel any fear. You're just going to go trade. And I, what I realized after a while was, no, that's actually, that should be your starting point. You, you should be at that point before you ever trade with real money. And if, you, if you'll do that, if you'll establish that, before you start trading with real money, yeah, it's the, 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 the stress level and everything, you know, everything from a psychological standpoint, it's night and day. Right. Do you find a lot of people though, like in the demo environment, they're very successful, they're profitable and they switch to live and they get ran over by a semi truck. And then do you find they're just demoralized after that? So like, cause it seems to be a pretty common occurrence amongst retail traders. They go into a demo, they're profitable, then they switch to live and they just get ran over. <laughs> Like, yeah, well, see, that's that's all in how they're going into the demo account, and and it's I mean, I, and I, I've done it myself before. But yeah, you know, the broker says here we'll set you up with a demo account. Here's fifty grand to go play with, and that's what people do. And they go play, and it's like being given you know fifty grand to go fart around in a casino in Las Vegas. And just because you're not worried about it because it's not your money, yeah, you you be more relaxed, and and the odds are going to be different than when it's your real money. But if you're going into the demo account and you're not going in to, to, to establish competence with a specific system, then that, that's, it's, it's actually counterproductive to go, to go mess around in the demo account. Because what you're going to be practicing is uh, unfocused, undefined un, uh, trading. But if you're going in there with a, with a specific method and it's well-defined, and you're going in to practice it with the intention of not making money, but getting good with that. Then again, that's a whole different matter. And so the big problem is how most people are approaching the demo account to start with. If they go into it, I'm going in here to build skill versus I'm going in here to play around and make money. Yeah, huge difference. Right. Yeah, that and makes sense. That is the difference is what I found. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. And then, um, going back to the other question, like what, what do you see of uh, the physical makeup of like a quality trader? So like you've worked with hundreds, if not thousands of traders at this point, like there must be some attributes of the very successful ones that are common amongst everybody. What, uh, what are some of the skill sets that you see or, or something that's just in the nature of, of those individuals? Um, well, uh, there's, there's a few key traits. Uh, one, one question, when, when somebody comes to me for coaching, one of, my, one of the first questions I ask them is, have you ever started and run your own business before outside of trading? Because I know that if they have, then they've gone through a lot of the learning curve that they need to be an independent trader. Um, just all the stuff that goes with working for yourself and building a real business the attitudes, the expectations, the, the skills, the, I mean, everything. That's a, an, an entirely different head on your shoulders from if somebody says, well, no, you know, I've been working, you know, for somebody else my entire life. That, that tells me that they've got two big learning curves to go through. They got to learn trading and they've got to learn how to work for themselves and start up a business. But if they've already started up the business, I know that they're settled down, they're more, much more sober about it, they're much more conservative, they're more risk averse, they want to be more and more organized and, and, and they're cautious. Uh, they'll want to make sure that things work before they get too busy risking money. They're not just going to throw money at it to make money. So they've got, they've got more of a business mindset versus the opportunity seeker kind of mindset. Opportunity seekers are like gamblers. It's like, oh, it'll make money? Sure, I'll throw money at it. Ah, crap, that didn't work. Oh, another shiny object. Throw money at it. So. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm right. talking about. But that's, I mean, that's what attracts most people to this industry, I would say. Like, oh, sure. Most people I talk to, what attracts them is the fact that they can make a lot of money, potentially, and mm -hmm. the fact that it's their own job. They, you know, they don't have to go into a nine to five and grind away. They could theoretically trade for a couple hours a day and make enough mm -hmm. to sustain. Um, obviously, most people lose money, though. Um, <laughs> so right. maybe that's, they, they need to adjust their mindset is what it sounded like. Well, yeah, like I said, if somebody if, if somebody's started their own business before, because that right there, whether it's trading or any other kind of business, if you're starting a real business, 
you're going to learn a lot in that process. Uh, most people, I mean, a lot of a lot of traders, and, and I used to hold the 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 perspective myself is you know trading is going to teach you a lot about yourself, and it's something magical about trading. It's not really so much about trading. It's it, it's learning how to start a business. I mean, if you if it's it's a big thing, it does require an entirely different mindset and expectations. Um, from being an employee, you know, when you're an employee, you know, you're used to trading your time, you get a paycheck. And it, the, the results aren't necessarily equating to the paycheck. Uh, I mean, that was one of the things that drove me nuts when I was in manufacturing and, and on a you know, monthly salary. It's like I can work 30 hours a week, I work 80 hours a week. I, I can be doing nothing or I can be changing the world, my paycheck's going to be the same. Right. And, and, you know, my wife, she loved that because it was like, you know, nice stable income. I didn't like it because it's like, man, I'm over here doing great things. I'm making tons of money for the company and it doesn't show my paycheck. So, yeah, as far as working for yourself and, and having that freedom where you now you control your income and that kind of stuff, sure, that's got a ton of appeal. But in making it happen is a whole different story. Um, and it's, well, one of the other things, and again, having done it with a real business, uh, a lot of traders, you know, it, it, one of the kind of conceptions that people have about traders is, oh, you know, we're the rogues, we're the we're the risk takers and all that kind of stuff. And again, that was one that I believed for a long time. But it's like, no, you want to have some serious guts. You want to be a true risk taker. Don't just take, you know, five or ten or twenty thousand dollars and open a trading account. Take your life savings, quarter million or half million dollars. And put it over here in this brick and mortar building and 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 wait six months before you ever get to make your first sale that takes guts that takes a huge amount of guts trading that's a weekend in vegas compared to it right so that's a good analogy here, yeah that's well, i thought about that that's i think oh, yeah. six months is being optimistic what do they what they say yeah, most, most of, companies don't make money until after a year Brick and mortar businesses, I mean, that's where it really takes some big guts and personal investment. And that's where a lot of the hard lessons are going to come from. And that's why I love asking that question if somebody started their own business before, because if they have, I know that they're going to have a whole lot more respect for trading than most most employee only traders do. Um, so, yeah, their, their whole approach to the matter is going to be entirely different and they are going to be much more likely to succeed much more because they've already gone through that learning curve of starting a business and getting it all organized and looking down the road and putting putting together real financial projections. Um, that's the other thing. If, for somebody that's never uh, run their own business, when you jump into trading and you say, you know, well, are you trading like a business? Do you have a business plan? Um, and it'd be like, well, you know, I've got a trading plan and the, the terminology gets thrown around. Some people look at a trading plan as, a, as their system. Some look at it as a business plan. But with the business plan, that's where you've thought it through thoroughly enough that you can actually make projections into the future. Not not just wishful thinking, but you've actually done a proper planning process where it's like, okay, I've, I've, I've looked into this and I've, I've tested it enough that I can actually make realistic projections for the next year or two years or five years. That That's why the business experience is so huge because you know to go through that process. It's not, not an easy process, especially if it's an industry that's new to you. If it's a whole new industry to put together that, that's tough. I mean, even if it's, if it's something you're familiar with. I mean, it's like if I wanted to open up my own pizzeria, I yeah, I'd get the restaurant business. I worked in restaurants before and I've you know, been in restaurant you know pizzerias before. But as far as putting one together, and being able to put together a business plan and, and actual financial projections and everything, man, I got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of stuff to think through, a lot of details to bring together to put together an actual plan. And then, of course, putting it into action and dealing with all the changes and stuff I didn't get right. So, anyway. What, um, um, so, not obviously, not everybody started their own business. Um, like true. What, what do you tell somebody that approaches trading that's never owned their own business? They've always been an employee of somebody else and they're just – they're looking for a little bit of, you know, independence and moving away from that or just earning some extra income. Like, what do you, what do you tell those people? Um, what I tell those people is, well, understand, first of all, you are starting your own business, regardless of the scale. It doesn't matter if you put a lemonade stand on a corner, that's still a business or a hot dog truck or, you know, whatever. So you still need to approach it from the same matter. But what I'll tell them is, and I really stress this, don't trade with real money until you know that what you have works and you can run the metrics on it 
and you know in measurable numbers what to expect from it as far as what its potentials are for profit, for drawdown, for all the swings, winning, you know, winning, losing percentages and all that kind of stuff. You know the numbers of the business realistically, not again, not just wishful thinking into what you want to make, but you, you've actually, you've, you've, you know, you've selected your system and your method that you're going to use. You get it well defined and documented. You test it, you measure it, you make sure that it's, it's satisfactory for you. Once you've done, gone through all that, if, if everything, you know, once you've got it to the point where, yes, I, I've got it, I've got it all well organized and I've got it tested and measured and I've demonstrated that it'll, it'll produce, then trade, then, then you can consider trading with real money, but only then. That's, that's what I tell them. That's like the starting point. And do you find people, I guess going back to that, do you find people that have started their own business or quicker to get to that stage than people not just because of all the experience level and you, you know, you said they're more well grounded. They've, you know, they've already gone oh, yeah. through a lot of the trials. So are they quicker to go from demo to live versus somebody that's never on their own business? Oh yeah. Yeah. And well then see that from there, then we run into the next challenge. Um, and it's, I, I find that it's not nearly as, as thoroughly discussed as it should be, um, is most traders kind of go by the assumption that, okay, you know, I, I ran across a system, you know, whether it was, you know, had it for sale or I ran across it in a Facebook group or, you know, in some forum. <laughs> anyway, I ran across the system and, well, you know, it sounds like, a, you know, it sounds like a pretty good strategy. Okay. And, and I'll give it a go. They never think to question it from a functional standpoint. They, they look at it, you know, okay, well, what's the premise? You know, am I going to be scalping or, you know, is it, you know, swing trading, whatever. They look at it from its, its uh, premise or its strategy but they don't know to look at it from a, a system standpoint. Is this a functional system that I can actually trade? And the reason I say this is I've had a lot of people come to me over the years and they'll say, well, you know, I bought the system from so-and-so and, you know, I know it's a good system, but I just can't get it to work right. You know, I'm trying to back test and everything and it just, I can't get it to work. Like, you know, they said, you know, their, their, their sales pitch said. And when we get to going through their system, and, and this is also true with people who've you know, tried to create their own systems. We go through the system, what I've found is the people writing the systems, they don't know really how to define and document a system from a, uh, a, a functional standpoint. Here's, here's what I'm talking about. It, 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 one, it, one question I love to ask people, traders. what is a trading system? I mean, oh, to you, you're what, me. what is a oh. trading system? <laughs> Yeah, I mean something that places trades. I don't know. Uh, tell tell me. Well, the the answer that I typically get back is, well, it's my rules and my indicators, and you know the okay. charts that I use. And I'm like, well, th those are tools within a trading system. But no, your trading system, it, it's not those things. It's what you do. That's your system. It's actually a systemized method. And if you think about your system, it really is, it, it's your, it's a, a decision-making process. And so your system is your step-by-step, -step, this is how I'm going to go through the decision-making process of placing trades, of identifying, you know, I, you know favorable conditions uh, that have some predictability to them. And then how am I going to get into that trade and how am I going to manage and how am I going to exit? But it's a decision-making process. We're collecting, you know, we're gathering information. We evaluate it against certain criteria and then make decisions based on that evaluation and then we proceed down through the flow. Well, if the, if the system isn't written that lends itself well to going through the decision-making process, there's, there's gaps or it's worded poorly or there's parts that are confusing or just plain left out, that's going to be tough to trade. And the details is where it comes in. I mean, if you think about it, the details is, is everything. Um, I mean, otherwise, buy low, sell high. Yeah, if you can do that consistently, you're going to make money. Well, yeah, it's in the details of how to buy low, sell high. Um, and so every system is the same thing. And again, that's where my quality background really, it, it's been helpful because a lot, of, a lot of quality, it's not, you know, SPC and process control with machines. A lot of it is working with people and how do you define standard operating procedures? How do you write an instruction set so that we can get consistent performance out of the people within the operation, regardless of what it is, what industry it is? 
I mean, that's one of the foundations of quality. And so if you look at a trading system from the perspective that it is your procedure, it's your set of instructions for placing trades, now it'll, it'll, it, it has a whole different tone to it and a whole different flow. Um, I mean, I've had some people that, that, and you know, working with them to get their trading system squared away. They, they send this document to me, and it'll be like 12 to 15 pages, you know, trading five-minute charts. And it's like you can't even read it fast enough to place the trades <laughs> because they've got all kinds of junk in there that doesn't belong there. For the first, first thing, and a lot of times people they've they've got a system that actually is a big mishmash of of other systems or you know four or five or six different systems trying to catch every opportunity out there. And it's like, no, you need to simplify it. Every, every method is its own process and needs to have its own procedure. So simplify things. And, that, and this, is what I, this is what I do working with people is we'll say, all right, out of these five that you have piled into this one right now, pick one and we're going to properly define it and document it and get it nice and cleaned up and make sure it's very functional. And then once we've got that, then we're going to go over here and test it and collect some real trade data with back testing just to make sure that it works under ideal conditions so that we establish the potentials for it. A lot of times people are trading with systems, they have no idea what it should or shouldn't produce as far as profits. They don't, they, they don't really have any idea what its potentials are for drawdown um, or uh, you know the, the um, average return per trade. A lot of people call that expectancy. I, I prefer average return per trade. Um, but it's the same thing. They have no idea what to expect from the system. And so when they go out there and it's not performing up to what they would like, they're getting freaked out. And they don't, they don't realize, well, this is just natural for that system. And that's what you learn in the testing process is, you know, what, what are the realistic expectations for it? Is, you know, can you have three losing trades in a row and you're still okay if you just stick to it? I don't know. But if they know that, or if they want to compare systems or if they make a change, to know how to properly you know, test a, a system is huge because that's where you establish your confidence with it and you're knowing and you keep the emotions out of it. It's, it's when you don't know when you're dealing with a bunch of unknowns that everybody gets freaked out and your emotions come into play because you're sitting there just like, I don't know what to expect. Oh God, it seems like there's just somebody on the other side of the screen that's messing with me. You know, but, you know, as a broker watching my trades and all, all that kind of stuff and it feels that way because it's, yeah, it's like if you don't know what to expect, it feels like the markets are just messing with you half the time. So anyway, did I answer your question? Yeah, you, you did. That, that was good. Um, I feel like it kind of wound up. If I'm going off on too much for a rant, you know, just it, it, tell me, calm me down. All right. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, so I just have a couple more questions. I guess uh, you know, how did you come up with the name Inside Out Trading? Like, what uh, what led you to that specific name? Um, that actually started with the the company I was going to start with the emotional intelligence coaches, because um, most success. I mean, any in anything, whether it's you know work or you know sports or whatever, your success is going to come from the inside, and and who you become and the skills that you build and the confidence and and all that kind of stuff. It all comes from the inside. Every, everything on the outside is just tools and information. So if you're going to be a successful trader or you know a golfer or whatever, you got to master the inner game. And and when you do that, the success on the outside generally follows. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, do you primarily provide just one-on-one -on -one coaching, or what are what are some of the services that you you offer through your site? Well, uh, over the years, I've got a, a bunch of freebies, different stuff, quizzes, and uh, worksheets, uh, checklists, that kind of stuff. But I also have uh, got a few different reports and books that I've written, um, and I have some uh, uh, video recorded uh, training programs. I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching, not as much as I used to. Um, Try to spend more time with my kids, uh, and uh, you know, get that, that that part of my life more in balance. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the, pretty much the full spectrum. You know, if somebody wants to work with me one on one, I'll do that. But generally, I'll I'll say you know, work with the videos. Um, they were developed after doing a lot of coaching, uh, working one on one with people, and so you'll it, it's a better value, and you can work at your own pace and on your own schedule. Um, I like working one on one with people, but I know for me the challenge has been having clients all over the globe. I mean, if I'm here in the States working with somebody in Australia or, you know, Singapore or whatever, the fact that we're on the other side of the planet can make it a little challenging and just, you know, trying to coordinate calendars versus here, you know, work at it, you know, at your convenience and that way they can keep their life balanced too. Plus, well, you know, I also did that because I want to be able to reach more people. If I'm working one-on-one -on -one with people, I can only help so many people. Right. Uh, and, and this way, yeah, I can, I can reach more people and, and, you know, if somebody goes through the programs and they, they need help, I mean, I, the other part of keeping the one-on-one -on -one coaching down is I want to be available for uh, support. 
Uh, I do I do tons of you know phone calls with people, uh, email support, uh, webinars, interviews like this. So uh, you know, keeping plenty of free time available for that kind of stuff. So uh, if somebody does need support, they want to to speak with you. If they have questions after this, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, InsideOutTrading.com. Uh, is my site, and that's yeah, that's the best place to reach me. Uh, and for anybody who wants to come and get you know get to know a little bit more about me, I've got a little intro video where I explain more about you know the stuff that I believe and the things that I've learned. Short video, right there, um, and they can sign up for a free webinar where I talk more about consistency and how that really is just huge uh, for traders. That really is one of the biggest skill sets that is missing in almost all trader training is the skill set of how to be consistent. Uh, learning how to trade, learning specific methods to trade, that's that's got its own uh, place, but learning how to be consistent, that's huge. Right. Okay. That's good. Um, and then what are some final thoughts like to, to tell? Uh, now that we're, we're about 35 minutes in, so if you had one thing to tell new traders, what, what would it be? Um, treat the matter with the proper respect. Probably, if I were to boil it down into one sentence, the biggest mistake people make is they underestimate the challenge of trading and they pay a hefty price for it. If you pay it the proper respect, as a, as a general statement, that right there will probably protect you as much as anything else. Pay it the proper respect. It is a skill-based profession, and if you'll do that, you'll probably be okay. Because most people, I find most people that come to trading, they're above average. They're above average intelligence. They they've managed to put away some money. They've managed to have a measurable and, and you know noteworthy success throughout their life. They're good people. They're sincere. So they've got a lot of personal assets that they're bringing. It's just what are you missing as far as knowledge about this particular profession? And if they if they treat with the proper respect, they get the skills and the knowledge that they need. Yeah, they'll probably be okay. Okay, nice. That's a uh, good parting words. Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. I uh, look forward to doing this again, hopefully in the, the near future. Yeah, yeah, this has been fun. Thank, thanks again. Uh, I've enjoyed it. And yeah, it, you know, any questions, whatever, feel free to reach out. Uh, and uh, yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, I'll put all your contact details in the, the description of the video. So everybody, make sure to contact Brian and uh, get in touch with them. Yeah, excellent. Thanks again. Yep, have a good day.